I think. You guys let me know in the live if we are good to go. Uh, let's get this video started with a few announcements. Um, but before I do that, if you guys could let me know. Uh, let me know how the sound is. Let me know how the video feed is. I'll go ahead and do roll call as soon as I get the feedback from you guys. What's going on, guys? Go ahead and uh, say hello in the live. And also let me know if sound is ready to go. If the video is good, we can go ahead and proceed. All right, looks like we are good to go. I'm starting to get some feedback from you guys. Excellent. Uh, hopefully everything is clear. We are good to start. Nintendo 504 is in the house. Good to have you on. Uh, what's going on, Pete? Good to have you on, brother. There we go. Just a little adjustment. Okay. All right. What's up, Michael? Good to have you on, brother. Rafi's in the house. He's got moderating duties tonight. Thank you for being here. Hey, hey, excited to see what you got for me, bud. Timothy Ball is in the house, maybe. If he's still in the house. Got 59 in the live. Thank you guys for being here. If you could, please like this video on your way in and do say hello to the SMT. Got our first super chat of the night. Fantastic. MT Houston, Texas is in the house. It says, can't get money to send even $10 for some reason, but hope this helps. Uh, thank you. Love all things tech and appreciate SMT and the crew for this channel. Watching this on my AT&T 5GE connection. Well, I mean, it's a good connection from what I understand. Uh, we're talking what, um, you know, multiple carrier aggregation, massive MIMO technology and compatibility. I mean, it's fast LTE. So, but uh, MT Houston, thanks for the super chat, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> all right. Benny D is in the house. Yellow. I'm a listen known replay. Sounds good to me. We got 66 in the live. Please go ahead and like this video on the way in. Uh, Timothy Ball. Open mic? Sure. Yeah, we could uh, throw around some topics. There are some things I do want to talk about first, and then we can kind of do open mic. Hope you guys are ready. All right, Pete, we'll see you when you get back. Uh, Tech ERG is in the house. I agree. It definitely does need to happen. We'll talk more about that in a second. Ronald is here. Good to have you on. Greg A is here. Greg moderating, I, I believe. Not sure what that is, actually. Check the sky for something. Fantastic. I'll check it after the live stream. Thanks, Mikey. What's going on, Sean? Good to have you on, buddy. Thanks for being here. Jessica, good to have you on as well. All right, good audio and visual. Excellent. Sound is good. Good. Uh, do you think the FCC is in the right in this situation? I do. There's many things they're wrong about. Um, fighting for the merger, regardless of their motivation, the end game is still good in my opinion. So, Awesome. Video and audio is good. Excellent. Ruth, good to have you on, as well as you, Nelson. Thank you for being here. Hello. Camera looks weird, almost foggy. I think it's the lighting. So the next thing I got to do is step up my game in the lighting. What's up, Monique? Good to have you on. John, what's happening, buddy? Looks great. Sounds great. Excellent. Thank you. Carl, hey, buddy. Good to have you on. Thanks for being here. Craig is in the house. Good to have you on as well. What reform is T-Mobile Sprint got to get from the FCC? I think the deal needs some prep work. <laughs> I, think, I think what we're going to talk about tonight will offer some clarity as to what the FCC might want to consider doing. So... Shirt is bright. <laughs> yeah, it's a white shirt. Maybe next time I'll wear a black shirt. Audio, video, 100%. Excellent. Chris Estes, good to have you on, buddy, friend of the show. All right, excellent. Very good. That logo going to cause – it's an LCD. I don't even care, man. What's up, Delaney? Jamal's in the house. Good to have you on, sir. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Monique. Nathan is here as well. John is here. Sneedles. <laughs> Tyler, thank you. Tendo 504 is in the house. What's up, Demetrius? We've got Meech in the house. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. What's up, Craig? Good to have you on. Greg is here. What's going on, buddy? Adam Buffalo. 
Good to have you here as well. What's up, Willie? What's happening, Two Phone General? Salute to the general. No, I don't think he's overreacting. I mean, he's, he, I, I don't know. He's, he's a weird dude. What's up, Martin? We'll talk about him today. What's happening, Matt Dub? Good to have you on. Michael is here. Trenton, good to have you on, young man. Good to see you here. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, caught you in your live stream earlier today. Uh, good show, as always. Always bringing it. Formerly known as Tech Rant, it is the artist known as Trenton Marshall. <laughs> good to have you on. Johnny, good to see you here tonight. Nathan is here. Randy is here. I got to move through these real quick. Alan Dub is here. Discord has been double notified. We, what happened there? Merger will fail. Verizon. No, that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> uh, do you know what? Do you know what? T-Mobile is going to get their 5G. Uh, 2020 should really get to going. Uh, we'll talk about that today. Jack and power up. All righty. Alan Dub. Okay. Uh, Stacy's here as well. Thank you for being here. Rick is in the house. My sprint service seems to be getting worse. That's not good. Steve Sanchez is here. Chase from Legos is in the house. Man, do I got everybody new? I think M. Garcia is here. Osiris is here. Thank you. Um, Paula, if you could just kind of hang tight to your questions. I'm just trying to do roll call. Rockstar is here. Jay is here. Uh, I'm almost caught up. Uh, ACDC is here. Need to hide those wires. I'm I'm waiting to do everything. I just got the TV up so I could play Xbox. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll get the wall done and I'll get everything finished up. It's a it's a project, you know. It'll it'll look good once everything's done. Uh, actually, uh, subscriber count. I'm hiding my subscriber count, bro. What's up, Chimis? Good to have you on. Uh, Mark is here. Jose is here. Josh P., good to have you on. Even though you're new, you are very welcome, and thank you for being here. <laughs> What's up, Ricky Florida Keys? All right, so we got 94 in the live. I just want to say thank you guys for being here. This is incredible, guys. I remember just like a year and a half ago when I first started doing live streams. I don't even know if it was a year and a half ago. It might have been a, like a year ago. Maybe not last summer, but the summer before. Whatever it was. My live streams used to have like 27 people. 47 people, 57 people. And now my live streams are completely jumping all the time. Tons of people in here in the live, having discussion, having a uh, good conversation, productive conversations about the carriers, different things like the merger. And uh, it's amazing to see such a supportive community. I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to thank you all who already liked the video. If you haven't done so, please do that now. Help the, the video get out there. Uh, John, I've got the, uh, whatever the newest Xbox is. I don't know what it's called. Xbox one, maybe <laughs> Paul, slow your roll. I'll get to you, bro. You're demanding. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Paul, throw me a super chat. I'll get to your question. <laughs> I'll get to you, bro. Hang tight, man. Just hang tight. All right. So we got, looks like a hundred in the live. Thank you guys again for being here. I am your host. The SMT, Sneed Mobile Tech. I uh, I think I might be carrying this alone tonight. Doesn't look like Pete's going to be on or anybody else. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Got 102 in the live. Thank you guys again for being here. As you are coming in, do like the video and make sure that you let the SMT know that you are in the house. All right. Uh, say hello in the live. So let's get to today's topic. Uh, I want to address a couple of things from today's news. So let's just kind of recap the news. Currently, it looks like the state attorneys general that are trying to block the merger are doing so in a way that they're not trying to negotiate in good faith. Uh, their goal is to block the merger completely. They do not want T-Mobile and Sprint to merge. Uh, regardless of what the outcome is in court uh, or what's going to happen leading up to court, we understand what the attorney's general goal is. They just, they want this thing blocked. And Anybody who tries to tell you this is not a political thing, it has completely become a strictly political thing. When the merger was first proposed, I kind of withheld my conclusion. I said it wasn't a political thing because I wanted to wait and see how it played out. But it has severely uh, <laughs> and dramatically indicated 
a political situation. It is completely bipartisan. There's only one Republican state to about 17 uh, Democratic states that are trying to block this. So a clear dichotomy and separation of political ideals. So it definitely is. Um, I will also say that states are in their right to try to block this. Uh, this is the legal setup of how these procedures go. And I'm perfectly fine with states trying to block it. However, where I have a problem is the reasoning behind it. So, uh, and I also want to just say really quick, so I don't forget, a uh, big thank you to Jay Cross for his super chat. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Um, we'll get to questions in a second. Uh, if you guys want to have discussion in live, go ahead. I just won't be addressing any type of questions right now in this instance. So let me get through a couple of things, then I'll get to the live. So here's the situation. Yes, partisan. Yes. Um, the issue is, is based on what the FCC wants to do in creating the new fourth carrier and getting these, you know, Sprint and T-Mobile companies merged. They're willing to allow it to happen. They are all for it. The main reason they're for it is because this makes T-Mobile a stronger 5G company moving forward. The FCC wants the United States to be more competitive internationally. With T-Mobile deploying massive amounts of mid-band, that can happen. And also with Dish Network owning all of this spectrum and yet to deploying it, well, that's a problem. They want it deployed. They want to see Dish using that spectrum. So this merger kills two birds with one stone. It gets Dish using the network or creating a network and using hoarded spectrum, and it gets a stronger third carrier that can compete internationally in 5G. This all works to the favor of Dish. This all works to the favor of T-Mobile. This all works in the favor of Sprint. Sprint has yet to show itself to be a legitimate competitor due to the inability to build a strong LTE network. There have been a lot of business issues, uh, management problems. We saw what happened last week. Uh, thank you, Ronald, for the super chat. Much appreciated. Um, and like I said, guys, I'll be getting to your questions and comments in a second. So just hang in there. Um, there's a lot of reasons and a lot of things to like about this merger. The DOJ did their part. The FCC has done their part as well as they're going to have to continue to do it. The states that are trying to block this have a legitimate concern. If they truly believe in what they're saying and that it might be anti-competitive, here's what the state attorneys general can do to try to block it. They're going to say pricing is going to go up. Customers are going to pay more for their services and it's going to hurt consumers in the long term. That is very possible and it is uh, not out of the realm of possibility. However, T-Mobile has already indicated that they are going to go ahead and do a three-year price lock. Verizon and AT&T will increase pricing several times between now and three years from now. In my opinion, they're going to do it with 5G. They're going to do it with their overall network pricing. Because they're investing heavily in 5G networks, they're going to raise pricing. Meanwhile, T-Mobile has already committed to not raising prices for three years. So what I'm saying is all the FCC has to do is get the guarantee, build in the concession, and then regulation that T-Mobile cannot raise pricing to an agreed amount of time, which T-Mobile has already agreed to three years. They might be able to squeeze an additional year out of T-Mobile and say, well, let's make it four or let's make it five. I think it's in the best interest of the consumer to keep pricing down. I think it shows that T-Mobile is willing to negotiate and flex a little bit. I actually like that from both sides. Okay, so I am all for the FCC maybe convincing T-Mobile to back off a little bit more and maybe hold off on raising pricing, maybe add an additional year or something like that. So that's something the FCC could do. Meanwhile, Verizon and AT&T are probably going to increase pricing. Why doesn't the attorneys general mention Verizon in this? Why don't they mention AT&T in this? These are two companies that are historically known for hitting customers with unbeknownst fees, unannounced price increases, and at times unfair overages and overcharges. So in my opinion, if you're going to re regulate any company, it really needs to be AT&T and Verizon. 
not really sure why they're being so hard on a carrier in T-Mobile who has shown innovation in pricing and value. So there's that part. Speaking of innovation, let's talk about innovation. The FCC has made it very clear that they want innovation. So do the uh, the attorneys general. They want to see that innovation is happening uh, in the networks and it's becoming a better product for consumers. Well, in innovation, T-Mobile is basically committing to nationwide 5G within three years. This merger getting blocked slows that progress down. They've already committed to concessions with the FCC. So I think they're good there in the innovation part. And of course, if T-Mobile is more viable, then we get Verizon and AT&T having to keep up, which is good. That's a position they've never really been in. So I kind of like the sound of that from the competitive standpoint for innovation. Another thing I want to take a look at is market share. With the merger, I think the state attorneys generals are going to say three big carriers is too much. Like as if it's better to have two big ones and then two small ones who can't compete. So I think the current market situation could use some fixing. We could introduce Dish as an up and coming provider and then have T-Mobile become a more viable market share component. Um, Jose, thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Thank you. Appreciate your donation. If Verizon has about 150 million subscribers, AT&T has about 150 million subscribers, give or take a few million there. They're very close. Even with the merger, T-Mobile still only has about 130 million subscribers. They're still 20 million behind first and second. So it's not like they're leapfrogging the competition. They're just getting closer. So there is that component. So that's one way they could look at it. But here's where things really, really affect kind of the claim that the state attorneys generals are going to say. And this is something that the FCC is going to have to address. The states are saying that this merger will cost consumers $4.5 billion. Well, if I was the FCC and if I was a regulatory body that was trying to convince this merger to be approved, my question is, where is that number coming from? Where are the analytics? Where is the data suggesting that consumers are going to lose $4.5 billion in the merger? I want to know how they calculate it. I want to know where the numbers are from. What are the indicators that implicate that number? Like, how do they come up with that number? I mean, it's important, I think. So I think the FCC should look into that. How are they coming up with that number and how do they have a rebuttal to that? Because they could probably make the same argument that they might be able to save customers money in the next three years because T-Mobile being such a huge company in terms of 5G deployment, right? This huge, massive nationwide network probably helps consumers. So that's kind of what they can say there. And not just with the innovation, not just with all of that, but like what are our options as consumers? The FCC could clearly say, just look at Sprint's numbers. Look at what Sprint has resorted to. Sprint has resorted to abusing the Lifeline program to make profits. They've been losing customers and hemorrhaging customers for quarter on quarter, right? So that's one of those situations. Um, I'm just, I'm not liking what Sprint has to offer. Management is a cluster. Uh, sales are poor. Their numbers are down. Their market share is atrocious. You guys know that Sprint has 54 million subscribers it's estimated they're going to lose a quarter million subscribers this quarter. That's 250,000. So unfortunately, Sprint is failing consumers. Why do we want to maintain status quo? The FCC could point to that and simply say Sprint is an awful provider. T-Mobile has indicated that in the past. Uh, you know, Sprint is self-proclaiming they're a horrible carrier. <laughs> So it's incredible. And who's to say that Dish is automatically going to fail as a carrier based on, on what? I mean, how would you know? Sprint's failing. So does that automatically mean the next fourth carrier is going to fail? And don't get me wrong. Sprint has potential to be successful. They just haven't put it together. Whether it's from ownership to management to lower management, executives, whatever. It's just it's been a problem for consumers. Ultimately, we're the ones paying the price. I don't care about people and their stocks. I own Sprint stock. I'm paying for it. I lost all this money. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm a consumer and that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that I have options in the wireless market 
where I'm getting legitimate coverage, legitimate performance at a competitive price. And I want all four carriers to offer similar performance and similar value. So unfortunately, I think what the states don't understand in all of this is there are some really serious holes in their argument that the FCC can absolutely demolish. So I always tell people, you speak with your wallet, and the people are speaking with their wallet. They're fleeing Sprint. So what would you rather have? Sprint, which is a carrier that has ultimately failed through LTE to this point, and they'll continue to lose market share. At that point, the pricing doesn't matter. The only way they have 54 million customers today is because they're giving out free service and giving out free and cheap lines. They're not even profitable. It's much better if we create a carrier that is more competitive, more innovative, has shown an aptitude in creating a more competent network, and their management has been completely successful. So I'm all for it. I just want you guys to know, if if you've been following the channel for the last year, I opposed the Sprint and T-Mobile merger in the very beginning. But after literally watching Sprint hemorrhage these customers every quarter and the lack of build out for their LTE and their inability to compete for customers, they're giving away free service. What business gives away free service? There's something fundamentally wrong about that. And this is not the bash sprint hour, but this is make, make a better option in the market than what Sprint is offering us now. This is actually, it's gotten to the point where it's actually not about Sprint. It's about creating a carrier that is more competitive than Sprint and making a T-Mobile carrier that's more competitive than the current T-Mobile. So in my opinion, these massive holes that the states have, if they're going to go into court and say things like, this is going to hurt consumers, they have to back it up. The FCC can kill them on that. And it actually can be built into concessions. So the states are going to say this is anti-competitive. Well, there's still going to be a fourth carrier. They just have to prove, the FCC has to prove that DISH will be a legitimate carrier that can replace Sprint and be more successful. And then from the innovation side, the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum truly belongs in the hands of T-Mobile. I don't want it in the hands of Verizon, and I don't want it in the hands of AT&T. I prefer to have it in the hands of T-Mobile. I just feel like it's it's more suitable to be with them. And they're willing to pay for it. They're willing to pay $26.2 billion. So I'm not trying to stop it and get in their way. I like T-Mobile's pricing better than AT&T and Verizon. AT&T is regarded as the most expensive carrier. Verizon is known as also being an expensive carrier. Why are we protecting them in this? And the FCC is not going to protect them in this. The FCC wants America to be competitive internationally in 5G. So not that it's an excuse, but it's a truth. It's a situation where this is something that America wants to be competitive in. China will want to excel. That's a real thing to America. The American government wants to compete internationally. Right? Yeah, there's some politics to this. Yeah, there's trade wars going on. So yes, there are political components to this. Frankie, I get it. T-Mobile's not buying anyone, but they're the operator here. So I use them interchangeably. So, yeah. It's just, uh, I think the FCC has to set it up and I think the FCC has to frame it. Maybe make some tweaks, make some adjustments to address the anti-competitive component, address the cost, right? Because the FCC is going to have to plug that hole in the argument where customers are going to be losing or giving up $4.5 billion. Where does that number come from? If I was the FCC, I would attack that right away. Where's the $4.5 billion going to be lost? And the pricing thing, who's more expensive than AT&T or Verizon? Definitely not T-Mobile. So that's kind of where I'm at with these items. That's how I see the FCC potentially reframing their attack. They've got to address the anti-competition. They've got to address DISH. They have to address the innovative part. 
the 5G component, international competition, worldwide providers. If the FCC can convince judges that this merger is going to help rural Americans and the average American get broadband internet in their homes, it's a slam dunk. Big cable has been a pain in the butt for customers for decades. This goes back to the 80s. If those of you are able to remember the 1980s, when cable first started, it's been expensive since then. And there have been no competitors because they get these regional lockdowns and these segments where they're monopolies. That changes everything. Yeah, I got it. I got it, Frankie. No problem. I don't want anybody, you know, ragdoll and sprint unnecessarily. <laughs> but we got to call it like it is, Frankie. You might like and enjoy sprint, but the truth of the matter is there's not much to like from as a business, you know, uh, for consumers. So in this situation, guys, I think the FCC has to fill up those gaps, plug those holes. And, you know, when they say the merger is 50-50, I don't know if a judge necessarily sees it that way. You never know. A judge may look at this, and, of course, it's a Manhattan judge. And, uh, you know, even if they were to side with the merger block, there might be an appeal. I mean, there's so much that can come from this. And it all kind of depends on how the judge sees this and how convincing the FCC is. But let's not get it twisted, guys. The FCC is a regulatory, a United States governing body that regulates. It is the Federal, <laughs> Federal Communications Commission. This is like a big thing. They're fighting for the merger. A judge sees that. Not that it's the only thing they see, but they see that. And they see the DOJ was part of these concessions. And they approved it. That all matters. So the states are doing their due diligence opposing it. They're legally allowed to do it. But their argument is severely flawed. We're currently at a very delicate place in LTE technology where we're starting to shift away from focusing on just LTE and focusing on LTE combined with the initial rollout of 5G when all the other countries internationally are starting to build out 5G, especially countries like China. So America does not want to fall behind, and that is something that the FCC is going to push. They're going to push competition. The FCC is going to push international relations. The FCC is going to push a new carrier and dish and... I think that's going to be the approach. There are a couple of things that I think the attorneys general are going to look stupid in, especially the pricing. I think, I think the pricing thing can be regulated. I think the FCC is going to insist on pricing being regulated, at least for a certain undetermined amount of time. We've got three years from T-Mobile. Who knows what it could change to? So that's where I'm at. I want to hear from you guys. I kind of went on my diatribe. That was legit, like, <laughs> felt like 20 minutes. So here we go. Uh, let's address a couple things going on in the chat. I feel like this channel does have some sort of discrimination. Like, obviously, SMT hates China. What? <laughs> I do not hate China. Uh, he's going to talk about this topic, and then we'll do an open mic. Yeah, and here we are, open mic. No Sprint Network will be merged into T-Mobile Network. That is true. Yeah, I'm done ranting, Frankie. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, Gene, we've got 17 or 18 states, counting D.C., Illinois, Oregon, New York, California, Texas, um, Pennsylvania. Sprint needs to sell their whole network and company to a competitive company that is honest and will stop telling so many lies out the back of their... Uh, I will say, my, uh, Michael, and by the way, Michael, welcome to the, the Patreon. Uh, glad you joined, and it's a, it's a pleasure to have you in the community. Um it's really hard to say that any carrier is honest. Sprint is not honest. We've seen that. T-Mobile is not honest. They will make things appear a certain way. That is deception. That is not honest. Uh, Verizon, we know their history. And AT&T is the worst. So, And not as a network, but as a company and what they do. They've done a lot of 
harmful things to people and competition, things that hurt consumers. Uh, price regulation with or without teeth. <laughs> uh, Greg A says, China got amazing LT coverage and they're already building 5G networks. All of that is true. Uh, China is doing huge things with 5G and that's because they're very centralized. So it's actually to their advantage. I think, Tom, Tom, what's going to happen is the FCC is going to address some of the specific attacks and the arguments that the AGs are going to have. So if the attorneys general are going to say things like, this is going to cost consumers money, the FCC has got to be able to, you know, refute that. And the same thing with if they're going to talk about anti-competition, you know, going from four to three carriers. Well, they're creating a fourth. Are they viable? You know, they've got to be convincing of those things. I'm not sure, Delaware. I forgot. Uh, DJ, so Boost Mobile gets better network? Absolutely. The new T-Mobile network will uh, is how they'll actually be functioning. Even as an ownership component of DISH, it'll actually run on the new T-Mobile network. Yeah, here we go. We want the U.S. to outdo China. It's happening slowly. Yeah, and it's harder to do because the U.S. is so much bigger. We've got a huge footprint compared to what China has. So it's easier for them to cover and blanket a country with LTE and 5G. Verizon should buy Boost. It's the best buyer. Uh, I'm not sure why Verizon would buy Boost. What, for like the 10 million subscribers maybe? Uh, what's up, Dat Boy? Will T-Mobile help Roblox players for playing without Wi-Fi? I don't know much about that. I don't know what that is, actually. <laughs> I don't understand what the states think will happen to job loss on Sprint if the merger doesn't go through. See, the thing, Deborah, it, and actually that's a component I forgot to mention, and it's huge. Jobs. Sprint has been losing jobs it, like they've been laying people off. I mean, it seems like every quarter, 5,000, 10,000, we hear about these things on an annual basis. What well, one point do we say enough is enough and say, well, these jobs are being lost annually. So if there's going to be a merger, at least some of those jobs can be retained. Don't forget about the jobs that are being created in the tower integration and the network integration and the build and expansion of 5G. So I understand that some jobs are lost. But then at the same time, jobs are created. I don't know if more jobs are going to be created than lost. I don't know. I'm not a psychic. I don't know what it takes to build out a network. I'm a school teacher who follows these types of networks closely, but I'm not a, I'm not Miss Cleo the psychic. All I'm saying is at some point, we have to notice and acknowledge that Sprint as a company is letting their consumers down, letting the U.S. public down, and that also includes job losses. So T-Mobile is showing job growth and Sprint is showing job losses. So a deficit in job creation. So I'm more for the one side that shows growth than it is for the side that is not. So that's kind of where I'm at there. Minecraft, online service for Minecraft, I'm not sure. Uh, so you think Boost Mobile will have 5G soon? Uh, they will under the concessions of the merger. So that would be kind of cool. Now you're going to need a 5G device. So having 5G is useless if you don't have the, the hardware to run it. Deutsche Telekom is in almost every country. So I say it's a monopoly. Yeah, but their market share isn't, you know, overtaking. So I don't know if I'd call it a, I've seen some ignoring on this channel. I hosted, bro, seriously. Wow. So if Sprint and T-Mobile merge, does this mean they will get rid of Sprint Network altogether or will it go to DISH? No, the Sprint Network, for the most part, is going to be retained and operated by the new T-Mobile. There will be parts of it that will be uh, provided as legacy sites for DISH. So that's all part of the deal. There's some hardware involved and stuff like that. And because of Spectrum compatibilities, it should be able to be utilized uh, instantaneously. Like there's not going to be any... Uh, any setbacks there? How many states are now opposed to the merger? Got about 17 or 18. I like T-Mobile and all the carriers. And as for companies, it's the best in my opinions of the four carriers. Sprint is a sinking ship. T-Mobile is its lifeline. In a way, you can make that argument. Hey, John, welcome to the Patreon, man. Thank you for supporting uh, the SMT production, man. Much appreciated, John. And welcome to the community. T-Mobile should sell Sprint after the merger. There is no Sprint. There's nothing to sell. It's all their stuff. Yeah, it's true. A lot of stuff from China. 
Sprint wouldn't be a product without mid-band. That's 100% true. Sprint cannot sell itself without the 2.5 gigahertz. If they sell any 2.5 gigahertz without selling the company, it's all for a loss. China is not a democracy, so it's feasible to deploy versus the U.S. Both countries are huge. But the thing that's, yeah, and I think the fact that it's centralized in terms of, you know, how the government owns and operates these networks, it it makes it a lot easier for them to blanket the country in 5G and LTE. Uh, Yeah, like on plane trips and stuff like that. Yeah, they're pretty good about that stuff. States are causing a bigger issue with holding up the build out and all the people who aren't getting paid do the hold up. Jay, that's a legitimate concern. You're so right. Uh, we've got companies that are supposed to be building out uh, new parts of the LTE network and 5G network for T-Mobile. They're currently on the shelf. Their contracts are on pause. There are actually companies waiting for payment from T-Mobile because T-Mobile's money is it's it's held up right now. Uh, they can't make payments on some of the work that's already been done. They will eventually get paid, but holding and waiting for your money for work that's already been done is it sucks as a company. Metro getting 5G, it'll happen. I don't know when. Uh, they were saying 2020, that would be amazing. Uh, but who on Metro PCS or Metro by T-Mobile has a 5G device? So you got to ask yourself that question. Sprint just closed over 1,100 stores. There's going to be a lot more of the merger doesn't happen. So, Timothy, you bring up a good point. Sprint closes over 1,000 stores. How many employees work at each store? How many regional managers now only go to certain sites? How many regional managers get laid off because now you only need so many, right? So that's kind of the situation there. I agree. It's an issue. T-Mobile doesn't give Wi-Fi. They do home internet in some markets. They're a phone company. Uh, they do the free Wi-Fi on the plane. That's a cool feature. Barry says, can the FCC provide loan guarantees to help Dish build, build out backed by their spectrum? They sure could. Uh, they could build those regulations there. Yeah, absolutely they could. We should not have to purchase a new device when 5G starts up. Nobody's forcing you to buy a 5G device, Gene. That would be up to you if you want 5G compatibility. It's up to you. Yeah, you ain't lying, bro. Uh, you can make your phone output Wi-Fi. That's true. Yeah, big shout out to everybody in the live. I want to thank you guys for being here. If you could, maybe you haven't done so already, uh, go ahead and like this video and you know say hi in the live chat. Uh, the SMT community is a great place. I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, Looks like a great turnout. We got 150 in live. Awesome. What's up, K Deuce? Good to have you on. Uh, Jihad says, What Boost Mobile needs is voice over LT. I can't believe they don't have it. Like, it's incredible to think in 2019, a carrier does not have voice over LT yet. I know it's a prepaid carrier, but you're right, man. They need voice over LT. People want to be on LT, you know, using their phone simultaneously. I don't blame you for saying that. Uh, Joseph's in the house. I heard the FCC approved the merger. Would this help the merger in court to win instead of being blocked? Absolutely. Showing full support from the FCC. The problem is there's still two commissioners who oppose it. Um, not a big deal. You just need the three out of five and they've got it. So yeah, it definitely does help. Uh, the thing is, is we kind of knew this was coming. It seems like there was an investigation. There's something going on with the whole lifeline program with Sprint. Uh, that's kind of become an issue there. If Verizon buys Boost, they can directly compete in the prepaid market. Boost will be able to expand to all markets overnight. So much more dealers will open stores right away. I will say this, Osiris, if you're not familiar with the visible prepaid service from Verizon, it is one of the most competitive offerings out there. Check out the visible service. And if you want to try it, there's a referral code in the links uh, are in my description box of my videos. 20 bucks. Try it. And I think you'll understand why Verizon doesn't need Boost. Verizon's always been able to do a good prepaid offering. They just haven't chosen to do it. I just don't know why. Uh, thanks, Rafi. Appreciate you taking care of business there, man. Thank you. Super and GM has Wi-Fi anywhere provided by AT&T. Yeah, but you got to pay for it. <laughs> Michael says Sprint and T-Mobile screwed up their own merger by causing deception being biased, doing acts of conflict of interest, doing fraud. We can't trust them. They do not deserve to merge in our country. Uh, Michael, honestly, I mean, it's a can of worms. These carriers are not honest. 
There's not a single one that I would call honest. They're all deceitful. They're all dishonest and they all steal and they all screw people and they're, they have really horrible consumer practices. So I'm not here to protect anybody. I'm not here to protect T-Mobile or Sprint, but I'm not protecting Verizon or AT&T either. In fact, they're probably two of the more guilty parties. Uh, da, da, da. I remember the Sprint store by me was so empty. They got no traffic, man. Well, Cyrus says, imagine Metro with the new T-Mobile versus Cricket on AT&T with Boost with Verizon. That'd be huge. That's the right play. I mean, that's that's your opinion. I respect it. I just, I don't see how Boost makes Verizon any any better off. Uh, I like Boost going to Dish. I actually, I really do. Deborah says uh, T-Mobile has two programs going on. One hotspot to try the service. That would be the test drive and the coverage for a month. And then also inviting some current customers to try home internet. Yeah. And the, the only issue Deborah with the home internet thing is just got to be in a certain market, you know? Yeah. Hit that like button. Much appreciated. I'm excited to see what T-Mobile does with the sprint, sprint spectrum. Um, I think they could do great things. They've shown a really incredible methodology to their network. They've come such a long way. Uh, their growth in LT has been awesome. As soon as they got off of those AT&T roaming agreements, uh, they've done great things with their 600 and 700 megahertz spectrum. What's up, Fabrizio? Good to have you on. How do I put live videos on iPhone 7 as a wallpaper? Not sure. <laughs> What's up, Braveheart? Good to have you on. Dark Expression 14K. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, what's up, Austin? Good to see you here. Glad you can make it tonight. Yeah, man. Got a had to wear a white t-shirt today. I was actually, I had my school shirt on. And I just took it off. Johnny boy. Now that I'm a patron, do I get a wrench? Yeah, let me get you a wrench, man. Uh, let me see if I can make this happen. One second. I'm going to give this a shot. <sighs> got to give you streaming duties here. So live control room. I think I can do it. Where's the. Nope. Hold on. Yeah. So I'm working on it, John. We'll get you. Uh, we'll get you the wrench here in a second. Right. Merger is sprint and dish. Neither of them has money. I'm not sure I could agree with that. Osiris. They're both broke. Do we really need 5g on our cell phones? Fabrizio, if you've never experienced a cell phone connection bottom out because there's too many people on a tower, that's when you wish you had 5G. Or if you've ever been to a stadium where there's 65,000 people and they're sharing a cell phone tower, that's when you wish you had 5G or at a concert series or something like that. You know, that sort of thing. All right. Redneck Petrovic is in the house or Petrovic. I'm from Russia. Our operator MTS has service voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling. I mean, that's what we're used to, right? Fabian says Sprint closed 1,100 stores. Sprint is closing 1,000 plus Sprint select stores. Make them COR stores. I don't like the idea of stuff closing, period. So what do the states want to make this happen? Um, I don't know. Maybe two phone if you could kind of rephrase that. I'm not sure if I understand. Uh, what's up, Nintendo 504? Both of these companies are just sitting on Spectrum. Why would they let Dish merge with Sprint? <laughs> Good point, man. Nice. We don't need 5G cells until it's ubiquitous. Agreed. Where did you see the thousand Sprint Select stores are closing or being concerted or corporate? Yeah, I didn't see the story, but who knows? Maybe I missed it. Just read that T-Mobile will not close the merger while the states are blocking the merger. That's true. They've been trying to come to some sort of an agreement. They've been trying to reach some kind of a settlement with them, but uh, unfortunately... The states are not having it. They want to go to court. So it's kind of the ball's been in their court for a while. They're just not having it. R9 says merger needs to happen. The pressure heavy on the sprint side. I think it's actually heavier on the uh on the T Mobile side, in my opinion. I think uh I think T Mobile actually wants to get their 5G rolling and they really need the merger to do this. So in my opinion, Sprint's already, you know, they're kind of used to failing. T-Mobile's not used to failing. <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of where I'm at there and, and how I see it. Um, one second. 
I just want to take care of something here, and then we can kind of get back to things. Uh, what's up, Ray's Mobile Carrier News? I already have a T-Mobile SIM card, actually. I have Verizon, and I have T-Mobile. So, um, And, uh, John, I think I have officially made you, added you a uh, moderator. So welcome to moderator status, my dude. Good to have you on. Thank you for you know, holding it down for the SMT Nation. Thank you. Yeah, when it's good, it's good. You ain't lying, Frankie. When it's bad, it's bad. When the T-Mobile get off of AT&T roaming, uh, I'm not sure if they still roam in certain parts, uh, but they were roaming on AT&T scot-free, I think from 2011 to 2017 or 2018 maybe. So just over like the last year or so. If you want to help support production here on the SMT YouTube channel, Go ahead and send me a PayPal donation. Greatly appreciate it if you guys want to do that. Just another way to show your appreciation to the SMT. If you appreciate the videos, if you appreciate your merger updates, if you appreciate your updates from AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, all that good stuff. Is T-Mobile in Jamaica? I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they are. They seem to be all over the place. Dan says, I live close to a college town, and they have a Sprint store and two Boost Mobile, Boost Mobile stores. Sounds like a good Sprint area, actually. Cyrus says T-Mobile prepaid has two lines for 65 if people want to take advantage of that. It's actually a pretty good deal. Yeah, uh, Tom, Tom, that is a um, that is a 65. I think it's a uh, it's one of those like high refresh rate ones or whatever. I don't know. It does a really good job with like sports and, and movies. I just I know that. <laughs> hey, welcome on, John. Good to have you on, buddy. Uh, when is this supposed to happen? I'm not sure what they're talking about there. <laughs> we need some SMT t-shirts. I like black with red letters. That would be a good t-shirt. I'll get back to you on that. We'll get some merch here on the channel. What do the states want to stop the lawsuit, to let the merger go through? I don't know if there's anything that will pacify the states. I think they just want to block it, honestly. Because, you know, Deutsche Telekom has already approached the states about coming to some kind of an agreement and to making some kind of a settlement, and they just they seem to be unwilling. So I don't know if anything will get the job done. I think it'll just have to go to court, and they'll just have to lose. <laughs> uh, what's up, buddy? Jay Cross says the states aren't taking an account that if the merger doesn't happen, all the Sprint stores will close. I think the states need to stay out of the merger. Well, maybe that's something that has to be proven. Maybe it's something that the FCC has to present. Maybe there's some data that can show it. Obed said the pressure is on the Sprint side because the service is going to suck soon. Obed, the service nationally is not good now. I don't know how much worse it can get. Uh, the upgrades are not happening. They're not competing. So, I mean, that's pretty bad as it is. I heard Sprint has given up towers because they don't have the money to pay for it. I haven't seen any tower shut down. I haven't seen anything like that. But uh, I don't know. We'll have to follow that closely. I'll look for it. Uh, nope, you can't have a wrench. Sorry. T-Mobile is roaming on AT&T in Arkansas. Hmm. I wonder if it's just 3G access or, or what it is. I asked you what a hotspot is, and you ignored me every time. I I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, a, hotspot is, <laughs> a hotspot is any type of a device that provides connectivity that is not the device you're using itself. Like, say you want to connect a phone or a tablet to, like, a Wi-Fi connection. You use a hotspot, which is basically a mobile variation of a router. Um, they're nice. They're, they're portable. Uh, they're, they're excellent. They're effective. They roam on at and in my area in Jamestown, New York, 3g, 4g. What are you getting there? T-Mobile still roams on at and in some areas, mostly rural went up to PA and was only able to force it to two X and, uh, but they're paying for that. See before they weren't paying for it. at and had to give it up in the concessions for the failed merger of 2011. Check out the history of the failed T-Mobile and AT&T video. Hate to see Sprint close up and their Spectrum goes up for auction. I know. I agree, man. I would hate it. What's up, Robert? Good to have you on. <laughs> what is prepaid? It's uh, pay for service up front, and then you get service, as opposed to postpaid, which is pay after you've used service. If you don't think this should merge with Sprint, who should other than T-Mobile? 
uh, a company with a lot of money ready for investment. Some people have speculated Google. Some people have speculated Amazon. I mean, that would be an incredible, incredible turn of events if Amazon became a major carrier in the U.S. It'd be huge. I don't know much about consumer cellular. It's a smaller company. Uh, I mean, it's an option for some people. Uh, they offer good pricing. I know that. Very competitive. Uh, but it always has been kind of geared towards a certain customer segment. It's not well known by the general public. Do you think Sprint is trying to stay open to try and get this merger to go through? I mean, they, they're they trying to operate a business. <laughs> we don't want them to shut down. We want people to keep their jobs. Uh, Michael says the state AGs are correct to block the merger after all of the evidence of pure corruption has come to everyone's knowledge. Again, you know, I'm not here to protect any carriers. T-Mobile is capable as well as Sprint. They're all capable of corruption. Uh, nobody more corrupt than AT&T, in my personal opinion. They are definitely the most corrupt. They are the most consumer unfriendly in their business practices. Uh, you know, their dishonesty, uh, their their attempt to try to buy out everything uh, and create monopolies and regional lockdowns. I mean, Michael, you're not wrong for saying that there's corruption from those two carriers, but call like it is. Verizon and AT&T are worse. Midwest guy with a super chat. Thank you uh, for the donation. Any theories of Verizon 5G secret weapon? not millimeter wave. I, th I think it's, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's roaming agreements with other companies that are building 5g IOT. I don't know. You know, maybe they got something going on there. Uh, Ricky Florida keys. Thank you for the super chat, man. Much appreciated. I'm all for this sprint T-Mobile merger because sprint kind of sucks. I think it would be beneficial for the networking. Absolutely agreed. I agree with you 100%. Thanks Pete. Appreciate it. Merger falls through Amazon by Sprint from SoftBank, revamps its business structure, headquarters staff, then partners with Dish. They're done. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I like the vision there. I don't see anything wrong with that playing out that way. Uh, it's been awesome, Barry. I really enjoy the T-Mobile network in the CLE. It is so good. Uh, outside of my issues at home, where I, you know, the LT is just really, really slow. It's better with my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus than my Google Pixel 3a XL because obviously better processor, probably better cellular radios. Um, it's been awesome. It's been so fast. It's generally as fast as Verizon, maybe a little bit slower, but in my experience, it is competing. And if T-Mobile is cheaper than Verizon, but performs close to the same, it's very compelling. A lot of people should give T-Mobile a try if they haven't done so in a long time. It's, it's very competitive in my opinion uh that one i believe is an lg yes uh yeah yeah this is uh it's a sectional yeah <laughs> got the sectional going on uh where are we at here fire mobile <laughs> yeah the amazon fire mobile yeah uh as you guys are coming in, if you're just getting into the live stream, please do like this video and say hello to the SMT. Drop me a comment in the live chat. Good to have you guys on. There's a report from Tech Life Channel. I heard they're giving up towers. Sheesh. Man. Um, if you can't operate them, if you... And may, yeah, maybe it is a situation where they're trying to indicate something like they're giving up the towers because they can't operate them. It costs too much money and uh, they don't have it. You know, maybe that is the case, or maybe they're just trying to look bad in the case of the merger. Like, hey, we we're going to our, our network's going to fail and it might actually work. It might be convincing. When I had T-Mobile, it was 4G on AT&T, 50 megabits. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Pros and cons on visible and limited $40 over Ryzen and limited 60. Uh, I think the visible is better because you have a limited LT hotspot. We should salvage Sprint by making Sprint find a new buyer. So you just don't want Sprint going to T-Mobile then is what you're saying, Michael. Uh, mobile roaming in Arkansas did a couple years ago. It sucks. Google, so I'm a joke to you. <laughs> Wonder what that is. Funny thing, they have like a strip mall here. They have a T-Mobile, Sprint, and Boost store. And across the street, there's Metro PCS. Well, that makes sense. Uh, if a customer doesn't want to pay for 
a more premium service from the postpaid, they get an option with prepaid. And then they could say, well, you could just go across the street. If you don't want Sprint for $60 a month, you can have uh, Boost for 50 a month. Or if you don't want T-Mobile for 75 a month, you could have Metro for 60 a month or whatever it is, or two for 80, whatever they're doing. Yeah, man. Super chats are open. Absolutely. Master Bill, good to have you on, man. Why do companies need entire stores dedicated to prepaid? I don't see the point. Well, they're going to be wanting to sell devices. Uh, people want a selection. Maybe they want to have a display, 15 to 20 devices. Maybe they want to offer hotspots. Maybe they want to you know, do a decorum that promotes their product. I mean, if you're cutting costs, maybe you're right. But if you're trying to keep up with the Jones and be competitive, uh, you want presentation. You want people to come into your store. I get discounts from consumer similar with consumer cellular with my AARP card. It's a good deal. Hey everyone, sorry I'm late. No, nah, you're not late, Paul. You're good. Amazon try to create satellite internet like space. Yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm following that story pretty closely. I actually uh, I'm gonna do a Patreon exclusive on it, maybe, uh, or maybe it'll be like an early access to the patrons, and then I'll probably put it to the channel. So I'll I'll cover the topic. Uh, I think what we'll do for uh, this guy right here, for this guy, uh, Rafi, Pete, any of the moderators out there, uh, let's go ahead and just um, let's just remove this guy. Let's go ahead and remove him from the channel if you guys don't mind. Five wrenches needed per live stream and has at least a thousand viewers to lock down the chat. Uh, what's up, Tech for Your Needs? Good to have you on. Thank you for being here. Angela, what's going on? AT&T is dropping money to block that merger. Sure feels like it, doesn't it? Really does. Uh, what's going on, Heath? Good to have you on, buddy. Yeah, Gene, I have T-Mobile. I have uh, I have one T-Mobile SIM card. Uh, that's the uh, that's what I have here. So I got the uh, Samsung Galaxy. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. This is the Galaxy S10 Plus. Uh, it's a good phone. I really like it. It's got a, it's got my T-Mobile SIM in there, and then I have my Google Pixel 3a XL, and that one has uh, my Verizon SIM in it. So, and then I have my iPhone 7, which has my visible SIM in it. So I got that going on. <laughs> good, John. Good one. Adventures with Jordy. Good to see you, bud. The merger does fail. Will that give AT&T and Verizon a monopoly on 5G? Uh, it really does create a situation where they're kind of in a distant third place for now and probably for the next few years. But it, it sucks to know that if it was to fail, they'd be forced to scramble. Uh, they'd be trying to find mid-band in the form of the C-band, the CBRS spectrum that the FCC is going to make available. They'll probably try to get their hands on some of the 2.5 gigahertz. I don't know if Sprint's going to want to part ways with it without a sale or an acquisition or a merger of some sort. So, wow, Tech for Your Needs, you're a loyal customer, man. Hope they're treating you well. I would I would guess it's treat they're treating you well because you've been with them for so long. Issues could be backhaul. Maybe T-Mobile does not pony up to the fast fiber in your area. Could just be in a congested area near a highway mall. Uh, not really. Um. I don't know. It's possible. Could be a backhaul issue. I don't know. Uh, at night, the speeds don't change very much, like two, three in the morning. I'll do a speed test. It's like four megabits per second. So I don't know. Paul Boyd, thank you for the super chat, man. Thank you for the kind and generous donation. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done it yet. My moderators get this guy out of here. Uh, what's actually wrong with Sprint? That's a good question. Why can't they compete? Their network is lagging. They're very, very behind in their network. Uh, they haven't expanded their LT network. They haven't competed with Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. Uh, they are by far nationally uh, the most, um, I guess they've got the most gaps in their coverage. They've got the biggest issues in speeds. Their uploads are really bad. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the situation. Sprint is missing... 
they're missing the correct management. They're missing the raw, the vision. They're missing the execution. Uh, you can't give away service for free. There's so much wrong in why Sprint is failing. And I'm not trying to pour it on. Everybody knows this about Sprint. I'm not trying to pick on them. I'm just calling it like it is. 163 in the live. Thank you guys for being here. If you could, please like this video on the way in and go ahead and drop your comments or questions or say hello to the SMT. 244 megabits per second down, 50 up. That is really, really fast. Wow. And if you had like a newer Android with a Qualcomm chip, you might even get faster speeds than that, which is incredible. Verizon offers pre- and post-paid service in one store. Yeah, they do. They don't do dedicated stores. That's true. Why is Metro still requiring you to go into store to buy a phone so early 2000s? I don't know. I don't know. They probably think that's what their customers want and need. 3G is faster than 4G at times. Man, that is a sad state of affair. That's not how it is in my experience, but if that's happening to you, that's that's really sad. Check Sprint's root metrics, calling score tanking. Their data is still okay because of the T-Mobile Roman agreement. Makes sense that they're letting towers go because their calls are all on their own towers. Yeah, but like there's something fundamentally flawed about saying it's okay to give up your native ownership of your macro sites. It's just, if you want to do 5G, how is that the option? <laughs> if you need 5G to excel, you need your own sites. You need your native network bolstering all of that. So I think that's where I have the problem with it, Barry, honestly. Yeah, somebody get this guy out of here. Oh, wait, you said John was made a moderator. I misunderstood. Okay. Uh, what's up, gamer Slimmy? What's happening? What's up, Alter Tech? Good to see you here, man. Thanks for stopping by. How's T-Mobile service compared to Verizon? It's very competitive. They're very, very similar. Verizon is still faster in most cases, but the latency on T-Mobile is really good. It's super, super low. So I'm getting, you know, instantaneous connectivity, like pings, like around 19 and 20. With Verizon, it's typically in like the upper 30s, mid 30s, 40s. Slimy in the house. What up? Hey, mods, can I get a head count? Alter Tech is here. SMT uh, that came on your Samsung has fire. Oh, the, the TV? Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, you have so many devices. I got three, man. I don't know. You got to test them and all that. I don't know. Uh, what do we got here? What's up, GMAC? Good to have you on, man. Who thinks Sprint can survive on their own over the next five years? Ugh. Survive? I don't know, man. Survive just means you're not dying. But that could mean a serious struggle, you know? Speed test? What, between like Verizon and uh, and T-Mobile? I could do that. Sure. Uh, been here for a while. Just got the flu. Oh, man. Alter Tech. I'm sorry, man. That sucks, bro. Emacs has been with T-Mobile for 20 plus years. Wow. You're an OG customer, Emac. Impressive. OG. Tom Tom's 10 years with T-Mobile. Nice. That's loyalty right there, buddy. Uh, 5G hit. Wow, that's really freaking fast. <laughs> uh, Jarrett says, can you speculate on what the FCC is changing in the proposal? I think what they're going to do is I think they're going to address the cost, the pricing situation. I think they're also going to address the job situation. And I think they're probably going to do something when it comes to that whole $4.5 billion number that's going to cost consumers. There's a lot of holes in the state AG attempted block that I think the FCC could really get. They got to keep in mind, man, the FCC is full of lawyers. The GOP ain't going to play with that. They're going to, they're going to bring it. <laughs> Come on, gamers. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh, yeah, go ahead and like the video as you guys are coming in here. Thanks for being here, by the way. Uh, get 200 megs on my S10 Plus on T-Mobile. Wow. I've, I've gotten that to certain places. Really just depends on the tower. <clears throat> 14 likes. No way. Let's get some likes up in here. Chad says, I work at Boost and Sprint spend so much money on different advertising, but they don't invest in the network. What's the point of these great deals but bad service? Yeah, I think there's some misguiding there. You know, that's that's a horrible approach. You should be investing in the network and competing there and also advertising and staying competitive in that side. So, yeah, they're, it's kind of like an incomplete business model. 
Craig says these state AGs are making me sick in the new 5G era. We'll be allowing only two competitors. Yeah, and that's why people speculate that AT&T and Verizon have their hands in this somehow. You know, I can't blame people for speculating that. Fast I've got on T-Mobile is 265. Upload, I got a max of 59. That's really, really fast. Why is the customer service separate with T-Mobile and Metro? Yeah, well, I mean, they're they're operated differently. So, you know, it, it can't be the same customer care. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, totally, R9. They totally did. YMAX was a huge issue. That was a major setback. Not just the money. What about the time? Right? Not going with LTE set them back. Playing catch up all these years. Hey, Chris, thanks, man. That's that's a really nice compliment, man. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the fact that you said honesty goes a long way. Associating my channel with honesty, uh, that's that's really nice of you. Thank you. What's up, Francis? Good to have you on, buddy. John says, went to the T-Mobile store. Must say the Note 10s are gorgeous. They really are. And I actually, I picked up a, an S10 Plus. Then I picked up a Note, and I was like, man, maybe I should just get a Note. <laughs> uh Wow, I'm on 3G now, and it's much better than 4G. Adventures with Jordy, what area is this? Cases on fire on your Samsung, show it again. Uh, so this is, oh, there we go. It's like a, like a clear case. Uh, it's got the bumper, uh, the colored bumper covers there on the corner, and it's got kind of like that lining there on the outside. I really like this case. It feels good, and it keeps the phone's appearance visible, like, you know, with the prism white it's really gorgeous i love this case um it's not like bulky or anything but like this one is super super sleek i love this one uh and it's really grippy but there's not much lip i, I try to be careful with this one uh, but i really like it man i don't know man i don't know why verizon is charging those fees it's really unnecessary and that's why i think a company like t-mobile is important right and the fact that they get more market share so people can experience you know, how customers should be cared for. Sprint may be giving up the towers that they're going to decommission anyways after the merger to limit their current bleeding debt during the pre-merger stages. That might be it. I don't know. I, I'd have to assess it. Uh, I'd have to know the sites. I'd have to know the markets. It might be some redundancy. I don't know. It might be roaming agreements with T-Mobile that's kind of driving this. I don't know. Voice stream. Yeah, man. <laughs> Got the, uh, that's old school right there. That's OG status. Anyone's tower goes out during a thunderstorm? No, I haven't seen that. Man, go get your pizza, man. Let me get a piece. Frankie says Sprint 240-32, ping 19. Yeah, Frankie, that's a good tower. Um, <laughs> that's about all I could say about that. That's a good tower. <laughs> and you were close to it. That's good. Uh, there's always a hater. You know how it is, man. Yeah, 100 likes. Sweet, man. Thank you guys for the likes. It is 100 likes. You need to refresh your browser. Sweet. Got 100 likes. All right. I think I'm catching up. Thomas got the hashtag 144P. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Speeds with Sneed. Oh, Gamer Slimy. I think you're on to something. I think you're on to something. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it, man. I have an unlimited plan. The only thing is 7 gigs of hotspot. Tech for your needs, I would definitely look into Visible. They've got unlimited LT hotspot. Check it out. Might be something you want to try. If it's if Verizon is good in your area, you might like it. Matthew says, what do you think 5G uh, phone should we get next to your iPhone, or should I wait a few more years? The iPhone next generation, so we're talking next year's iPhones, they're rumored to be 5G. We don't know for sure but they are rumored to be 5G capable. If that's the case, if you have 5G in and around your area, you may want to consider it. A lot of people are taking the stance that maybe they should wait a couple of years before they go 5G phone. Uh, currently, the 5G phones are expensive and the network availability is next to non-existent. Uh, actually, no, Oceanic, I don't, I don't use a screen protector. They don't stay on, man. They get bubbles and stuff. The curved edges just don't allow for a good uh, a good adherence, you know? How about the Samsung Fold Phone 2Gs? 
two stacks is just too much for any phone. There's not a phone they could make me unless somehow the phone in and of itself made me money <laughs> that I would own a phone that would cost it $2,000. I try not to spend more than 500 on a phone. I mean, 2000 is way out of the range that I want to pay. <laughs> One needs Vaseline. <laughs> Uh, Emac is officially a friend of the channel. That's something the SMT would say. <laughs> Good stuff. What's up, Brock? How much of Ryzen's 3G is now shut down? A lot of it is, I mean, there's just a handful of markets that I think have 3G still up and running. Uh, and it's where they don't have LTE, so it's kind of required. I get around 270 megabits per second here in Vegas. Wow, that's really fast. That's awesome. But Mr... Uh, Dirt 7T. What I would ask you is, is it one tower that gets you that? Because you got to think about a city as a whole. Even the top speed doesn't matter. I'm thinking like, are you getting usable speeds everywhere? Does it ever go into 3G? Do you drop calls? Do you lose LTE? You know, like those things are kind of important. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, got to go. Starting a storm here. All right. Good luck, Dan. Thanks, Gene. Appreciate you liking the video. Uh, Idaho Falls, when they throttle the network, I drop down to 3G. I have no problem with data speeds. Wow. So what it, if you do a, a speed test on your 3G, are you seeing like 5 megabits per second, 4 megabits per second? What's up, Nathan? Speed test speeds with Sneed. All right. Speed test coming. Maybe we'll do the first one tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we'll look at uh, – well, maybe we'll do like a comparison between Verizon and uh, and T-Mobile postpaid. Hashtag AT&T trash and Verabzin. <laughs> if I go to the casinos, my phone drops to Wi-Fi calling in 3G only. That thing must be a fortress. <laughs> Monique's got the Note 10 Plus. That is a really nice phone. Bet you spent a grip, though, for it, Monique. It's pricey, but it is beautiful. My farm town, I can get 20 ping, 120 megabits per second down, but 12 megabits up on boost. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, I paid a thousand for my Xperia Z5 Premium. That's a really nice phone. That's not typically a phone that U.S. users have. Uh, it's it's interesting you picked it up. The fold is not for the average consumers, only the elite. Good one. Alter Texas people are right. I'm getting faster download speeds on 3G than 4G right now. Almost everyone can afford 4G. This is a sign we're overdue for 5G. I actually feel Alter Tech like. We never actually maximized 4G LTE. Uh, we, I feel like the market kind of rushed to 5G, but uh, we want more. And if they're going to build out 5G in this way, then so be it. But we could have definitely did more with 4G LTE. Uh, you know when you call yourself that you're calling yourself the Sneed Mobile Tech? But, but that's me, man. I'm the SMT, bro. <laughs> that's me. Uh, it's pretty consistent around the whole Vegas area, even North Vegas. Well, it looks to me like maybe as a public service announcement, according to you know customers, uh, these are the types of things we need to know. If you're in the Vegas area, apparently Sprint's a great service. That's something consumers should know. Uh, when you go to a city, when you move to a new area, you want to know who's the carrier to have. And I think that's some important and valuable information. So uh, thank you for the comments, Mr. Dirt7T. Much appreciated. That's crazy that 3G is better than 4G in some places. I, That's nuts. Uh, Gamer Slimy says, hope the merger goes through, creates jobs, better competition for America. <laughs> well said. Well said, sir. I had LTN T-Mobile in Delaware. If you like a phone company, but you think they're robbing you blind, tell them to stick it where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Take your money to an MVNO that uses the same towers. That's a great plan, Michael. It's an excellent idea. T-Mobile really took off the part of the decade. I'm telling you, Robert, from 2011 on, T-Mobile has been killing the game. They really have impressed me. Uh, can you do a video of how 5G isn't good for our health? Uh, there's no health risk in 5G. <laughs> I mean, all radiation has risk, but there's nothing that different about 5G and LTE. It's way overblown. Uh, a lot of the 5G waves that we're going to be coming in contact with in the future, we're currently deployed or previously deployed as TV waves. So there's that. I hear Sprint's really good in Chicago. Plus they got 5G. 
What's up, Delon? Good to have you on, buddy. Glad you could make it. Do you think that a speed test on the newer LT phones in 2019 would be superior to my OnePlus 6T or about the same? Probably about the same. Not much has changed in a year. It'll be close. I don't I don't see it being too too different. I just can't see that being the case. Sprint is amazing in Vegas. Okay, so there's confirmation. Jihad's got some experience there too. T-Mobile is the place to be now. Yeah, man. Got the S10 transparency case with kickstand and tempered glass. Easy to put on. Fits well like a glove. You can do it, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. 5G is not eyes and eyes. Man, Craig, you ain't got to preach to the choir, man. I know all about it. I think people need to do some reading, and they need to do their own research on it. You don't have to convince me, man. Thanks for the comment. I got visible, and it sucks. My sprint is getting 150 down and about 6 up. LTE and cheap Moto G6. Oshkosh, Wisconsin, everywhere I go besides in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, Quentin, I think you got the right idea. Keep that sprint if visible sucks. Visible is only good in very strong Verizon areas, not just areas where Verizon has a lot of LTE, but also where it has lots of capacity and the network is bolstered with you know, lots of small cells and stuff like that. Why does Sprint have you lease devices, but other carriers have you do device payments there? Because they take the phone back. <laughs> Worried about 5G? Check right on levels in your basement. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a lot of people don't know about that. How many hashtag Gs before the radiation is too strong for your own safety? Like HE. Uh, the, the number of Gs is irrelevant. <laughs> that's funny. Sprint is good in almost every major city. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, they should be, right? But they're they're rural and they're, I, I guess, they're nationwide. You know, traveling type of connectivity is questionable. Device payments are better than leasing, of course, because you have a device at the end of it, right? SoCal, not good. Uh, all right. I'm almost caught up in the live chat. It only took an hour and 17 minutes. <laughs> I want full ionizing cans. <laughs> hey, Robert, on my birthday, I'll be wearing the uh, uh, the Alex Jones hat, you know, the, the tinfoil hat. Tom, Tom, my visible has been great. I mean, like I said, it's been different in everybody's experiences. Should worry more about poison our food and GMOs, man. Seriously. <laughs> and inorganics and pesticides and all that. It's terrible for our health. WiMAX was a it was um it was a technology that Sprint was going to deploy that they hedged their bets on that was going to be the next generation of technology. Uh it was a completely flawed approach. Uh what ended up happening is while the rest of the world went LTE. They tried to go WiMAX. So when everybody went right, they went left. And it really costed them big time. I'm not going past 7G because I know the radiation is too strong. <laughs> uh, 5G stinks until they build it to travel far and work indoors, outdoors. Uh, yeah, it can be done. You need a combination of low band, mid band, and millimeter wave. You do it in kind of that type of approach, and, and you'll meet the needs of the network and the people. What's up, Tech Love and Mama? Good to have you on. Glad you could stop by. Friend of the show. Uh, December. My birthday is in December. Sprint is fantastic in the DFW and surrounding area. I hear it's very good there. That's that's good. 9G gives me a death. <laughs> uh, Jad says, I'm in Southern California. Sprint isn't too good. I hear a lot of carriers struggle in uh, SoCal. They need to really bolster the network there. There's a lot of people there. Sprint not good in Delaware. Sprint's not good in Ohio. I don't know, maybe in parts of, you know, downtown CLE in Columbus. Just got out of work. Uh, good to have you on. I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking, Tech Love and Mama. I hope you are well also. What's up, JP? Oh, yeah, big time. Huge, huge dichotomy there. I wonder what Nikola Tesla's thoughts on 5G would be. <laughs> I guess we could speculate. Sprint sucks in New York. I hear in New York City it's pretty good. Nah, mergers kind of, you know, going through the paces. Got to get to court. Do you think by 10 GLT we'll have holographic support for iPhone? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the Saints, man. I love the Browns. So, yeah. What's up, Jackson? T-Mobile's customer support is great. Uh, one of the best parts of T-Mobile is how well they take care of their customers from the customer care standpoint. They really do a good job of that. Got to upgrade to a new router. Got any recommendations? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Motorola MG7550, that's the one I'm using. 
got it's a it's a dual band router. It's Doxis 3.0, and you can get it on eBay for like 70 bucks, maybe less, maybe like 50 bucks. And it's excellent range. It'll take care of a full house. It does all three levels in my house, and uh, it's awesome. It's really, really good. The Moto MG7550. Been waiting for the gaming channel. Uh, I don't do enough gaming, man. I, I play FIFA. I could do 2K. I might do Madden, but like that's really it. What's up, Greggy? Uh, good to have you on. Uh, I am the SMT, and this is the Sneed Mobile Tech YouTube channel, man. Thanks for stopping by. We talk tech. We talk network technology, the wireless carriers. The merger is a big topic right now. Uh, maybe you have a carrier that you're curious about. This channel gives you updates on all of that stuff. Ricky Florida Key says, WiMAX was claimed to be 4G, but really an upper-end 3G on a horrible frequency with poor range and building penetration. All that to say it was awful, and it was not as good as LTE. <laughs> oh man uh thanks gene appreciate it just came here for the free popcorn visible has been great in bristol indiana highest speeds 50 megabits per second down 30 up that's really good speed like scott what else would you need right 50 megabits per second download and you're paying 40 dollars a month you you can't beat it you know wonder if 5g will support car wi-fi yeah yeah there's going to be uh, IoT and stuff like that. Sprint has a great network. Their phones just don't transition from one band to other well due to the non-compatibility in their phones. That is a real issue, actually. Um, all other carriers have better compatibility with phones. Um, I think they made some bad decisions in their network technology also. Uh, the way they do their upload is just really, really bad. Really bad. T-Mobile good in Harrisburg and Laurel, Mississippi. Okay. What's up, Tech Boner? What are the chances of the merger going through? I like the chances of the merger going through. I, I honestly do. I'm optimistic. Um, I say greater than 50%. I say greater than 70%. I just, they're trying to drag it out, you know, and uh, they think that that's going to be the setback there. Are the carriers still building out LTE other than T-Mobile with 600, 700 megahertz? Uh, and I think, I think Verizon, I mean, Verizon is always building out their network but they're mostly they're mostly covered in the u.s i don't know how much they're expanding but uh you know they upgrade sites and and they add small cells to cities that's been mostly their focus as for at&t their focus has been you know band 14 so and band 14 is it's been huge for at&t people are reporting great things from at&t verizon is the best in socal but still spotty yeah I've heard that. I mean, I've been to SoCal. I've been to San Diego, LA, and the speeds were slow. 159 viewers. Yeah, big shout out. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Yeah, Nighthawk is really good. But the the suggestion I gave you cost 50 bucks. Nighthawk's going to probably cost you about 200. Worth it, but you know, you got to think about, you know, cost. Sneed can reach. <laughs> Has it been too long with this merger? I wish they could get it done. I heard Dish Network is not good. Um, yeah, as a satellite TV provider. This is really sad news, Altered Tech. T-Mobile discontinuing the OnePlus 7 Pro to make room for the 7T. They don't have to make room. They could sell both. Uh, they probably just think, like, you know, we only need one OnePlus device, and we don't want them stepping on each other's toes. I don't know. Maybe it's something like that. Uh, what will the merger do for a Sprint customer? I'm thinking of switching to Sprint. Uh, I think, well, it's going to improve national coverage. It's going to give them 5G access sooner. Uh, the network will definitely be better for sure. Heard that Dish Network is not good. Wish the merger would come to an end. Uh, why is Sprint only deploying band 41 and 61 to 70% of market towers? <clears throat> to 4G and 5G, I mean, that number really should be higher. Band 41 is really their only capacity band. There's an AT&T LT LAA small cell near my house. I get 350 down, 40 up. Seems similar to 5G millimeter wave, and you get 200 feet from the cell and speeds decrease significantly. So it is similar in that way. I think the way that licensed, unlicensed LAA spectrum is designed is to provide capacity, but yeah, it doesn't have good range. But it's all about the spectrum they use, you know. Hey, thanks, Jackson. 
Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, live action entertainment. What do I think of the Verizon network? It's really extensive LTE. They've got LTE everywhere. I don't know if anybody has more LTE, maybe AT&T. I don't know. Uh, their speeds are pretty good. Uh, they do have some congestion issues. They manage the network very aggressively in certain cities. Uh, but if you're in a city that has a lot of capacity with Verizon, they're usually the best carrier. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 I'm pretty confident saying that. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, Master Bill. Didn't T-Mobile slow down updates to sell sites? They're at a pause, actually, Angelo. Slow down isn't even the word. It's at a pause. Um, I prefer band 14. There you have uh, Jad says, I believe once Narger goes through, Boost Mobile is going to explode and do very good. I agree with that. I think Boost Mobile does get some serious growth uh, with Dish and operating on a better network, you know, that sort of thing. I see a lot of potential there as the MVNOs kind of grow and the opportunities present themselves. Uh, one of the nicest thing about the merger is the potential for MVNO deals, right? There's a lot of potential there. Why are up leads so slow? Carriers and home internet have spectrum home internet. My upload is seven megabits. I don't know. There's just, I think that's a problem. I honestly don't like the the fact that our L uploads are so slow. <sighs> what good is band 26, man? I mean, it's it's gone in the merger, <laughs> if that makes you happy. Google Fi data only sim on pause. It still lets me use data on 2G speeds on T-Mobile. Wow, that's cool. So a little bit of connectivity. What's up, Paul? You made it back, man. Uh, hopefully you got all of that worked out of your system. You were getting a little uh, cranky earlier. Um, looks like someone tried to block out the grass. What? <laughs> uh, what's up, Tech Boner? I'm really looking for the merger. I'm tired of just AT&T and Verizon. Tech Boner, you get, you get quote of the day. You get the comment of the night right there. Tired of AT&T and Verizon only. T-Mobile has great plans but needs more coverage. This merger offers that to you. Very, very true statement. Uh, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, man. 100 megahertz is the sweet spot for band 41. Yeah. Verizon in Southeast Texas is pretty good. Houston on the list for 5G millimeter wave. I think it's been turned on at the NRG Stadium. But doesn't benefit me unless you go to a game, right? Uh, the audience has grown. It's clear kind of people and all. Yeah, man, it's been awesome. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm like relatable and I'm like an average dude. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, I don't try to be something I'm not. <laughs> I enjoy the company of the Sneedles. I enjoy the subscribers. I'm always in the comment section reading what people write. Uh, I enjoy doing the live streams and kind of engaging with you guys. So, you know. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I like visible service. It's been awesome. I think it's a great value, uh, especially the uh, limited hotspot. All right. So I have caught up in the live chat. I'm up to speed with everything. I tried to kind of get to everybody's comments. Uh, I tried to kind of have good conversation uh, with all of you, and it was a lot of fun. My goal was to be on here for an hour. Uh, we're well beyond that. We're at like an hour and a half. So uh, let me give a couple of shout outs. I want to give some shout outs to the new patrons over on Patreon. Uh, we do have some new members. So we got Dominic V. We have Michael L. And we have Tharlin C. Thank you guys for joining the community over on Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, there is a link in the description box of all my videos. There's also a link to the Discord gang if you guys want to check that out. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty awesome community. We talk carriers, we share photos, we do speed tests, uh, conversations about, you know, what's going on in the mobile world. And uh, it's a very supportive and kind of like a get to know the community type of place. So, uh, and I'm in there all the time connecting with you guys. So check out those links there in the description box. If you want to support the channel, you can always do so with a PayPal donation. Uh, those are greatly appreciated. Uh, helps support, you know, the production here on the channel. It keeps me making videos, keeping you guys updated. Uh, you know, producing content and keeping you guys in the know. 
I, I obviously, I enjoy doing it and it's a pleasure to do so. And, uh, you know, the support just keeps me motivated to continue to do it. So uh, I'm thankful for all my subscribers. I'm thankful for all my viewers. Thank you for all the comments, the live chats. Um, you guys have been amazing. Uh, the conversation was great, uh, with the exception of a, of a few ornery fellers in the live chat. <laughs> but I still got love for you guys, too. I love everybody out there. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you to all who donated any type of live chat, super chat, uh, or, or, uh, PayPal donation. Thank you guys. Uh, those gestures are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for liking the video. If you haven't done so, please do that now. Maybe it's your first time here. Uh, I do these podcasts all the time. Uh, usually do one on Friday. We started doing one on Sunday and then I've been doing a midweek one whenever there's big news from the merger, like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, so stick with me. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell also so you get notified whenever I do drop a new video or I'm going live. And, uh, yeah, welcome to the community for all the new people. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for being here for all the returning subscribers and those that have been riding with me for so long. Uh, thank you guys again for everything. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. I think I'll wrap it up there. Uh, thank you to all my moderators. Thank you guys for holding it down for me. Uh, thank you to all those that support the SMT. And actually, and thank you, John, for the super chat. Um, and actually, thank you for the haters out there. Love you guys, too. Uh, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I am the SMT, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.